Good day, my name is John Still of the University of New South Wales. This is another in my little series of videos on complex analysis. In this video, we're going to be looking at residues at poles. We've already looked at residues at removable singularities and essential singularities in the previous video. Now, to remind you what happens when we have a pole, we have a pole if an analytic function can be written in this shape, uh, c minus p over z minus z naught to the p plus and then higher order powers on z minus z naught strictly bigger than zero and less than some number r, where this c minus p coefficient is not zero. That's a pole of order p. And remind you what the residue is. The residue is this coefficient c minus 1 here. That's the thing we want out of this series. And we can find that uh, residue by writing down the series. And I'll show you an example of that later on. But uh, we also have this formula here that the residue is given by, well, it looks a little complicated, but if you think about it, it's not actually difficult to see what you do. You multiply by z minus z naught to the p, to essentially clear all the uh, fractions away, and then you want to pick this term c minus 1 up. So if you differentiate enough times, all the lower order powers in this product will disappear, and then we just want the, what we get when we send z to z naught. Of course, differentiating p minus 1 times will bring in a factor of p minus 1 factorial, so you've got to divide that out. So it's not a difficult formula to come up with, even if you forget the details of it. Just remember, clear the fractions, differentiate to get to the coefficient you want. So I'm going to do uh, a few simple examples. Before I do that, another comment I should make. Uh, in the case when p is 1, so we have a pole of order 1, or a simple pole, then we don't differentiate at all, we just multiply by z minus z naught and take the limit. And in fact, finding that limit does two things. It proves that your pole is of order 1 and it finds the residue. For higher order poles, the proof that a thing is of order p, which is just taking the limit of this term here without differentiating and finding something uh, finite and non-zero, <coughs> is a different calculation to finding the residue. I'll show you that in an example. So be aware. Simple poles, one limit finds both residue and gives you a proof of the order any higher order pole. You've got to technically do uh, two different limits or use the zero accountancy method that I talked about in the video on zeros and poles. So here are my first two simple examples. 1 upon z squared minus 3z plus 3, 4z minus 4z plus 3 I should say. And what we're going to find here is the residue at one of the zeros of the denominator, and we'll take uh, z equals 3, which is um, one of the zeros. And what we're going to have there is a simple pole, because this quadratic here will factorise into z minus 3 times z minus 1. So the denominator has two simple zeros. One over that function, therefore, will have two simple poles. That's what I talked about in the video on zeros and poles. So the residue at z is 3 of f is, well, 1 over 0 factorial, which is, of course, just 1, times the limit as z goes to 3 of z minus 3 times f of z. Now, you could use L'Hopital to find that limit. It's a bit pointless for something this simple. Factorise that quadratic cancel off the z minus 3s and we're going to get the limit as z goes to 3, 1 over z minus 1, which is of course uh, a half, and that's the residue. My second example, I'm going to find the residue at z equals 1, which from the shape of it we see is going to be uh, a double pole, a pole of order 2, because we're going to have a, a 0 of order 2 of denominator. And or we could, we could about prove that using the limit. So if we look at, uh, well I'll write that down first, we've got here a pole of order 2 at z equals 1 because the limit as z goes to 2, z minus 1 squared f of z well, we're just going to get the limit as z goes to 2 of, sorry, limit as z goes to 1 is what we want here. The limit as z goes to 1 of 1 upon z minus 2, z plus 2, I mean, the limit 
the z goes to 1, 1 over z plus 2, which of course is a third, which is not 0. So by our previous video that proves what we've got here is a pole of order 2. And as for the residue, at z equals 1 of f, we need to find the limit as z goes to 1 of the first derivative of z minus 1 squared times z, which we've already written down as 1 over z plus 2. Well, differentiate <coughs> 1 over z plus 2, and of course we get, let me write it in, limit as z goes to 2, z goes to 1, sorry, of um, minus 1 over z plus 2 all squared, which is, of course, minus 1 on 9. And that's the residue of this function. Now, as I said, you can use this formula, but the issue you might face for higher order poles, well, when the function's um, rational, you might as well uh, just do the factorizations. But in other cases, uh, you might want to use L'Hopital or need to use L'Hopital to find the limits, but that can take you a, a lot of calculation. Sometimes it is, in fact, simpler to find the series. Well, not the whole series. After all, we only want this one coefficient, so we just find that one coefficient. So my second example, I'm going to do, uh, show you an example where, my third example, I should say, I'm going to do an example where that's what happens. The series is actually the quickest method of doing it. Now, in this uh, third and last example, we're going to be looking at 1 upon e to the z minus 1 minus z. That has a pole of order 2, at z equals 0. And we can see that because we can write down e to the z minus 1 minus z, its series around z equals 0, begins with the z squared. It begins 1 upon 2 factorial z squared plus. The first two terms of the e to the z series are cancelled off. So we've got a 0 of order 2, 1 over a 0 of order 2 is a pole of order 2. So a pole of order 2, that's z equals 0. So if we were to use the formula here, we'd have to write the residue at z equals 0. This function f is the limit as z goes to 0, d by dz, <coughs> z squared over e to the z minus 1 minus z. Right. So we'd have to differentiate this quotient, not very pleasant, and the only way we could then find the limit would be to use L'Hopital. Well, in fact, I've tried this out, and you need to go through four terms of L'Hopital to get this limit out. Now that's far too much work, really. I mean, the whole purpose of the game is to uh, find these residues without doing any more work than you need to. So what we're going to do instead is actually find the series for this function f. We know it's a pole of order 2, so we know the shape of the series, and that's going to be enough. We say, let's let f of z be, well, let's call it b2 over z squared plus b1 over z plus a0 plus and so on. Well, b2 is not 0, b1 is the thing we want. Then, as f of z times e to the z minus 1 minus z is simply 1. We know the series for that. We've written down a shape for the series of that. We just pick out the term that we want, b1 in other words. What do we get? We have uh, b2 over z squared plus b1 over z plus and so on times uh, 1 upon 2 factorial z squared plus 1 upon 3 factorial z cubed plus so on is 1. So in order to find the coefficients here, we expand these out term by term. We just treat them as if they're big polynomials. And multiplying the leading two terms here will give us a constant on the left, which must equal the constant on the right. So as that is true, um, b2 times a 1 upon 2 factorial is 1, so 
b2, in fact it must be 2, and then when we multiply uh, the next order power in order to get a power z to the 1, it would be 1 times over z times a half z squared, and we'll also get a z from multiplying the b2 over z squared by that term there, so we get uh, um, 1 upon 2 factorial 1 upon 2 times b1 plus 1 upon 3 factorial times b2 must be, well there isn't a z on the other side so the coefficient is 0 and all we now need to do is solve that and we already know that b2 is 2 so that tells me a half b2 plus a third must be 0 so b1 which is the residue remember the thing we're after is minus 2 thirds. And that's much simpler than going through this calculation here where we've got to differentiate a quotient and then apply L'Hopital four times. So the moral here is don't work in autopilot. Don't always just blindly use the formula. Think a bit first to see whether the series is not going to be more useful. If there are exponentials and trig functions involved and the order of the pole is higher than one, you probably are better off using the series. Uh, otherwise, rely on the formula. Thank you.